They now put on his children as problem with his other son, which is Sayyidina Yusuf. These children took their brother away from the father. Okay? That is a sin which no one can imagine. And he, for all these years, when in the absence of Sayyidina Yusuf, he was crying every day until he became blind. And the children, he just want from them what to say, he's alive. But they never said that. How rude they are. He's a prophet and father. They still insist, no, no, he's gone. So he was crying. But in the end of the day, what happened? Sayyid Yusuf came back to him. To make a story short. <laughs> but see what's happened. Sayyid Yusuf's job, that is, Daily, what you do? He has a cattle, sheep, looking after them. So he's a shepherd, we call it that. If Sayyidina Yusuf remains with his father, what is going to be? He will inherit his father's job. Correct? He will be a shepherd like his father. They separated for years. Uh -huh. Who was looking after Sayyidina Yusuf? Who was Subhanahu wa ta'ala? So he brought him back to his father as a prime minister. If he remained with his father, he would be a shepherd like him. Okay. But he would go on away, and the father doesn't know. He came back as a prime minister of the most powerful country at that time, Egypt. The one who was the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you travel overseas, when you travel anywhere, there's a dua we recite. What do you call this dua? To our suffer, right? In this dua, what we say, Allahumma anta sahibu fi suffer, wal khalifa tu fi ahl. Ya Allah, you are the one who accompanied me in my trouble. You are the one who is with me in my trouble. And you are the one who look after my family in my absence. SubhanAllah, he is with you in your trouble and he is with your family in your absence. When we know these meanings, we won't have any problem in our life. And we won't think of any problem as long as we know that He is with us and we have the faith, the yaqeen, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protecting us and protecting those who we care for them. To say that I want to be close to Allah now and to feel the closeness to Him, as we say, this is a very challenging because it's a very challenging question. Why? Because the whole life we've been given to us to try our best to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole life. But what is there is always tips in between. If you try to be close to Allah one meter. There's a situation, Allah will be close to you 100 meters. You are trying, but he, he himself, he is the one who pull you to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The situations. So how to reach to that? Let's say if I ask a question now. What's the meaning of nearness? To Allah. Or closeness, sorry. How is it? Where do you, you find the closeness to Allah, let's say? In which situation? Give me an example. There are many examples of that. I'll give you one. Anyone can say it? To good. Okay, that's good. To good. Your salah, that means prayer. That's all. Yeah, huh? Don't tell me we close to Allah even our salah. No. Your children, you are close to Allah. 
the whole Quran, 114 surah, is talking about closeness to Allah in many ways. If you feed the poor, you are close to Allah already. If you fast, you are close to Allah. If you help blind person across in the world, you are close to Allah. If you remove the blockage from the, the past of the people, you are close to Allah. something good to this boy, to the boy, and to the, I saw my dream like I'm in paradise because of this good deeds. So the husband went to the same place. Uh -huh. He went to see the boy. And he said, boy, take this ten dollars from me. The boy said, why? He said, my wife, he told her, told him the story. He said, no, I won't accept from you. He said, why? He said, your wife did that for the sake of Allah. You are doing for the property, Jannah you want. Not for the, not pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you see, if you ask Allah something, He will give you that thing. But if you ask closeness to Him, He will give you everything. Okay? In the verse of Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, in the Surah Ali Ibran, verse 152, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Minkum man yuridu al-dunya, wa minkum man yuridu al-akhirah. Among you who desires this world, and among you who desires the hereafter. Right? I want dunya, I want me. Others who are the akhirah. And the dream, someone who's, any, nothing. But nobody, he is no, nobody. He was a crossing, and he heard the recital of Quran. You know, while reciting, and he said this verse among people who wants dunya, among people who wants Ashra. He stopped and said, Then who was the creator of dunya and Ashra? Who wants Allah? This is a worship of traders. See, if you want from Him, you will do. Sometimes people, if they will have project or exam, you know, or something, you will see them dua and salat hajat and Quran and sawma to Allah. Like يعني سيدنا سليمان عليه السلام. The minute to everything done, Sajjad left behind, the 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 dust will come up about the Quran again, you know, cover the Quran. This is what we call it. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, this is a worship of traders. Because they want something. Other one, worship of slaves. Those who they scared, oh, I don't want to be Jahannam, I don't want to be sick, I don't want to be that. Yeah? There are people thinking always about sickness. 
Think of what this will be. Think of like this. This is what Christ is going to have to be. I like that, like that. So they live in their life sick before sickness comes. They think because of they think about sickness, sickness, but sometimes I will come. But there's someone came to a man. He said, Yahi, do you have someone who can tell us the future? Huh? Well, if you're, if you're, if you're this one, uh, what do you call it? <coughs> Fortune teller. Huh? Someone who can read, tell me what's going to happen. He said to him, I don't know. I don't know anyone who can tell you about the future. But I know who, who controls the future. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He controls the future. You want to do something? You will see good. You will, you will see the good of it. You see the good of everything. So those who are scared from something, you know, this is the worship of slaves. They are scared from their masters. It, no matter how much they do, and then they spawn mistake, they stick in their head. But you see, those people with the worship, with love, they are a new being. If you, if you don't have love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have missed everything in your life. If you don't have the feelings of munaka in salat, in dua, in hajjud, in doing something good, to run, to do something good before anyone else do that good, huh? if you are able to do, you kill the one who do. Why you lose the opportunity? The opportunities are not sent to you. Huh? If you are not like that, you have lost the monarchy. You have lost the most beautiful part of your life, which is called Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and hearing his answer. In what? In your heart. So there are ways that we can do by being good to others, and that will make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy with us. More than uh, your son tahajjud, more than anything else, it's depending on the sincerity, your class. Listen to this verse of Quran, and that will explain for us everything. In Surah Al Hadid, verse 11. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Man the Ladi Yukri Allah Kamran Hassan, Ayuba Ifa Ulahu, Walahu Ajuru Kareem. Who is there that will offer to Allah a handsome dog? So that Allah, He may multiply it, it's you and may multiply its reward for Him, and He shall have an excellent reward. Allah said, Who's the one who's going to give me a loan? If it's a loan, you have to be to, to pay back to you. Right? If they give you a loan, I pay back to you double. And to give Allah, how to give a loan? To give the people, the needy. If Allah said, if you give them, you're giving me. If Aisha radiallahu anha, when she used to give sadaqah or zakat, she used to put it for free. Hataki. Okay, why? Because it will reach to Allah before it's reached to the poor. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any deeds you do, any good deeds. Your mother disturb you, your mother says something, make you upset, your face becomes like. Let me just remember that if you please, you please Allah. It's fine. Okay. It's okay. It's difficult, right? It's difficult sometimes. Or most of the time. Right? But is it impossible? Impossible? Ah. Ah. What am I going to happen after that? How am I going to reward me? Okay. So, Ar-Rahman. Hal jaza'u ihsan? There is, is there any reward for good other, other than good? Ihsan, you do Ihsan, for example, to your mother. In the pain, in the, in who's, going, in, in, who's going to reward you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that Ihsan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about Ihsan in many places. One of them, Wabil Walidayni Ihsanan. 
parents ihsan, doing with their parents ihsan is the top of good deeds. Where Allah look into it. And you know, because of, you know, because when you smile, you know that I did that for the sake of Allah, Allah look into me. That is ihsan on that. That's ihsan. Has been a Similar also. Small letter cut it. Let's ignore. Continue. Try to twist the situation. Let the happiness be there in the house. There is someone who has an argument with his wife. I like the story of this. He, for sure, was very upset with him. So that day, she cooked the food, not in a proper way. And for example, he doesn't like chicken. Biryani, she cooked chicken biryani. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like spice, she put extra spice. He doesn't like so she put salt. He, she, and the rice is not fully cooked. You can drink the when you She wants to see his reaction. To tell her how important she is, you know, she is in, her, in, in, in his life. He came back home, she served the food for him. <laughs> he was eating and looking to her smiling. <laughs> Then she said, I don't mind. Why is mine? The food is not nice. He said, you are so smart. Mm -hmm. You are so smart. He said, why? He said, you know, you want to remind me about the early stage of our marriage, where you cannot cook that time. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you want to remind me. See, subhanAllah, he changed them. She's why now she become happy. Yeah. <laughs> this happiness, this happiness is what? Allah mission about it, mawadda wa rahma. He wants this from you. So this make it close to whom? Allah. Allah. This, yes, that's how. So simple to be close to Allah, in fact. Because anything you do, make it close to Allah as long as for the sake of Allah. Do it in a proper way. Okay, I'll give you another example. Oh, I, I, I like this because it's also simple and to understand. Um, imagine with me. Imagine with me that one day someone knocks the door of your house. When you open the door, you see Sayyidina Rasulullah oh, Come, coming to visit you. Of course, you'll be, if you see him in a dream, you'll be very happy. How about to see him in your house? Yeah, just imagine. Then you say, I, I came now to spend one night with you and your family, 24 hours. See what's going to happen that you come to the house, do this, do that, you do your, don't, don't play this game, don't do this, <laughs> don't, so, remove this, remove that. <laughs> then the talk with your husband and wife, darling, can I have that prayer, please, if you don't mind. Yes, my beloved, this is fine. <laughs> the children, father, kiss the hand. <laughs> No, 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 please, I bring water. Don't go, I bring water for you. The whole thing changed. Why? Because Sayyidina Rasulullah loved them. Loved to see the happy, the family happy. And that is what Allah loves to see. Not Sayyidina Rasulullah. Sayyidina Rasulullah, under the day, he is Al Habib al Arab, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but he's Makhluk, Al Khalaq, one that happened. Jalal al Din Rumi, Sayyidina Jalal al Din Rumi said, he's a great man, mashallah. He's a beautiful boy. He said something very interesting. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have sent you his messenger. Uh -huh. So that his messenger will send you to Allah. Yeah. Allah said, Sayyidina Rasulullah to you, so Rasulullah will take you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, to explaining to you the meaning of all these physically. Whenever you want to know about something, you will read. And you see how Sayyidina Rasulullah, Al-Anbiya wa Al-Musayyid, all prophets and messengers, they lie. It is in Quran. Sayyidina Ibrahim, Sayyidina Ismail, Sayyidina Yunus, Sayyidina Ismail, everything is there. All the situations, it's there all for all of us. Wallah, we are very lucky. It's extremely lucky. We have these uh, beautiful examples, real examples, not imagination. Huh? It's a real example, and when you read the Quran, you, you know, you're not only getting something good for your life, reading the Quran itself will make you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just read it. How about understand? 
<coughs> this all, you know, uh, something we have to look after. We have to pay attention uh, to this uh, to this matter. Because reading the Quran alone, well, there's barakah and reciting the Quran, but you were losing the barakah of understanding. They say the certificate, graduation certificate, you know, someone graduate, that shows that you're educated. You have finished your education. But did it say that you understand what you study? <laughs> huh? You know, everyone can read, but not everyone understand. It's different. Correct? So the Quran alone observe. No. Then the Quran is not the same. Then the Quran is the situation changed like that. We understand that any good we do, any good deeds in our life we do, make us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this case, we will be close to Him very fast. Very, very fast. When Sayyidina Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa said, one day, he was sitting with a Sahaba and he said, who is the one who fed the poor today? Sayyidina Bakr said, me also. The other people also said. See, who is the one who said, funeral, janazah, follow the janazah to funeral to, to burial? People say, and Sayyidina Bakr said, me also. Say, who's the one who, yeah, you saw two people have an issue, two brothers have a misunderstanding, and he, he go and fix between Saka and Stalius and Joseph and Peter. Stalius, yeah. The cover, man, he be close. Hey. something to do every day. So, Sayyidina Bakr said, Ya Rasulullah, what the one who do everything, all this, all in one. He said, among my ummah, there are all doors of paradise asking him to come through the mosque, Allah, Allah, allow him to enter through it, and you are one of them, Ya Bakr. So he's Rasulullah's best companion, but he said, I am, I am the best companion, Khalas, I grant I want to mention my name in Quran, I just relax in my house. <laughs> we do more. Because when Allah pull you to him, you find the sweetness, you cannot leave that sweetness. SubhanAllah. Uh, yani, when you do something, you will feel happy. Happiness comes from where? From here or from here? From the heart. Right? If your heart, if Allah lifts your heart at that moment, when you're doing something good, with ikhlas, sincerity. You did something good. Like a smile or, you know, all this, any, even good. And Allah looked to your heart, your heart, and I look into the heart. And, but he accepts from you these good deeds. Qabilna, qabda, you know. He said, your heart will be on this position of happiness until the end of the life. Yeah. If you are in sujood, and Allah accept from you your sujood, your heart will be in sujood position until the end of that. It won't leave you. They will be with you always. That feeling. There are people, it used to be something before. SubhanAllah, Allah changed the situation and become totally different. When Sayyidina Rasulullah came to Makkah, they came to each other, they do this, they changed the situation, become brothers. No more. Why? Why? By the blessing of Allah, of Allah, you became brother. That's what Allah wants for us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to do. Learning to say Alhamdulillah always. Don't complain. Don't complain Allah to anyone. Why Allah doing that to me? Why Allah put me? You have to complain to someone who's helpless. 
He will say, yes, please, why am I doing that to God? Be cursed, I think, or something. He will make you more, you know. But don't complain to Allah, but complain, don't complain Allah to anyone, but complain to Allah. Don't complain Allah, but complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't say, Ya Allah, I have great problem. Always. In fact, everything in our life is great problem. Problem. What is it? This time my income lost one dollar, one hundred dollars. <laughs> or I didn't get. You see, we always look to one part of the story, but not the whole part. Allah said, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّدْ For one year, for two years, for three years, you are happy. All of a sudden, something happened. Something unexpected for you happened. But Allah knows about it or not? By hikmah, Allah knows. And it's not that mean Allah make you to live as a king, for you to be happy and to be close to him. No, there is death, there is suffering also. For the sure sabri, Allah said the good news for the patient. Now you study, most of you brothers and sisters, you students, you study very hard for four or five years, right? And then you got, but when you got the certificate, you'll be very happy of ilm and understanding also, inshallah, right? <laughs> but if you, but you know, you sit at home and the certificate comes for you after five years, you'll be happy with the certificate? Without doing nothing, huh? You'll be happy with it? Maybe, I think. But inside you, something say, this is useless. Yeah. So, struggle is there. Don't forget the blessings which are given to you in one incident happened in your life. See what others, how others suffer, and how you enjoy, and then you understand the meaning of being thankful to Allah. Someone don't have shoes, new shoes. His shoe is very old. And he was hoping to buy a new one. When I'm going to buy that? When I'm not going to help him? While he was thinking of someone in wheelchair. You see, I'm not happy like that. The wheelchair person, he saw an ambulance carrying what? Someone accident. He said, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. One. The ambulance when he go to the pay the one uh, the patient when he go to hospital, he saw someone dead. Alhamdulillah, I'm still alive. The only one who's dead cannot say Alhamdulillah. <laughs> you have lost. The language and thanks for to Allah have to be there always. You have to say, you know, in life we like to say thank you, but not easy sometimes to come from our heart. Especially if someone who doesn't like you, or doesn't, you doesn't like you, when he does something for you, you find bitter to say thank you. But they say thank you. You say, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, or oh, this is something different. The other situation is, let me explain in uh, this situation of good and bad. There's someone who has two daughters. One of them buried in the east, and one laid in the west. So he decided to visit them. He went to the first one. In the east. And she said, How are you? She said, Alhamdulillah, but you know, my husband have invested everything we have in this farm. He bought seeds and you know, now we are ready, waiting for him to come. If him no come, not coming, get finished. Oh, everything is done. Habis. Habis. Ignore it. Alhamdulillah, He went to other one. What her husband do? And guess what? He made vases out of clay. Yeah? He said, Alhamdulillah, we're waiting to drive. If it's rain, we are in crisis. Well, that's why if no rain, they're in crisis. <laughs> so he went to back home. The wife, the wife said, How is everything? He said, If it's rain, say Alhamdulillah. If it's not rain, also say Alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay, this is saying what? All, all situations, all situations, make the language of Alhamdulillah be with you all the time. Don't complain. Don't look to the small thing you have lost. Think that the things which remain with you, the things cannot be replaced. And the things can't be replaced if it's gone, 
forget about it. The one who gave it to you before, and the one he gives the same one will give you again. Correct or not? Hmm? You don't want to lose. May Allah protect us from losing. Among the ibadat, among the abortion, which make us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the ibadah, this is I'm talking about highway, the very fast. The ibadah of giving something secretly. With the presence of social media now, everybody knows everything about us. Because I did something like this, I move my pen. I, it's, I, something like that, I take picture and post. I mean, but somewhere I go for a film function, food, I post. Oh God, that some people doesn't have food. When they see that, yani, there's an issue here. They ask me, Alhamdulillah. Give, help people secretly, secretly, that anyone knows. Let it be just between you and Allah. Of course, there's something inside this. Tell Allah that why you never talk. <laughs> At least they'll be like you. If Allah wants them to be like us, He knows how to make them know about them. No need for Him to say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, fi sabirillah today. Allah, I give Him. Some <laughs> <laughs> people, what they do? Masjid. Yani, one dollar. Salat, yani. Uh, uh, you see uh, 1,000 notes in the tabu? Never? I've been uh, once or twice now. Never. <laughs> <laughs> but one ringgit, uh, sorry, two dollars, many of them. How do that dollars what I can see? Okay. If someone give 1,000, Today. And everybody looks like I'm favoring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when I go shopping center, I buy something, how much you spend? Two dollars. Only? You want nothing like me. <laughs> shopping center. But fi sabirillah? Oh, la hawla wa la quwwata illa Are you favoring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You can do something sincerity, fi sabirillah. One day, this story is happening in Iraq. I know the story, and I know the people of the story also. There is one very wealthy man. He was built in Masjid. He's a very nice person, very generous. So he instructed the contractors and the workers do not accept a single cent from anyone. I will do this to build it from my own money. I don't want anything from anyone. So every day he would always, oh, please don't, yes, yes, yes. One day, an old woman, very old lady, she had nothing, no children. She came with a small piece of cloth. She was covering something. And while the bricklayer, he was putting the cement and the bricks, you know, she came to him and she took out one brick from the cloth while well, the bricks was Clean, washed, and then if you want it also. She said, My son, can you put this please? Okay, so what about it? nothing he put it. Message finish, opening ceremony, our brother saw in his dream that Allah bless him with one palace in Jannah. Next to him, similar palace. For whom this? For that woman. Subhanallah. For this so and so lady, who, he knows that lady, very poor. So when he did, started his education, he told him the story. One break. Allah judged the king not to the amount of money. We judge the king. Like for example, we know if I give one, how much Allah give me in return? Ten. Ten times. Ah, that means one dollar Allah give me how much? Ten dollars. Is that correct? No, it's not. <laughs> How? You gave one dollar, 
That would according to your ability. I'm able to give one dollar only, or ten dollars. So if you're expecting how much from Allah to give, ten. But there's problem here of your understanding. You give one dollar with according to your ability. Allah give you ten times with according to his ability. Al Karim, not ten. You see Allah's ability. Only ten times like this, one dollar for ten, ten for one? In many ways. Many ways. You have an issue, Allah will cover it. You have sickness coming, Allah will cover it. You have argument there, Allah will cover it. You have exam coming, Allah will make it easy for you. Sayyidina Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ta'u marwakum bis sadaqa. Heal your sick people with sadaqa. Sadaqa is not medicine. But you, why? Please Allah. You are to please Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. These are the meaning of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We talk about as we are an ordinary people, we need this closeness in our life. And we talk about the closeness of an awliya wa salihin, when you read about them, that's a different story to a story taught him. And when they prayed in a different world, and in different, but they started as, I am saying this now, started like that, and they reached to this level. One step, one after another. Let me give an example of Sayyidina Shaykhul Qadr. Sayyidina Shaykhul Qadr, and everyone, you know, and all of you know that. Sayyidina Imam al Ghazali, Shaykhul Qadr, the most known scholars in Islam, who have the names that they have. What he, he, what he did? His mother, his mother passed away, and the mother was looking after him, and his grandfather from his mother's side. They never taught him only al Quran. They taught him how to practice the Quran in his daily life. Feed the poor, help the spot, go ahead and do everything. So he understands the closeness to Allah in many ways, from small age. And I like what we do here in Malaysia and Singapore. I mean, Singapore here and Malaysia. In, in Eid, for example, in Eid, the people go to Anayatim, Tahfir, they sit, especially in Qurban, in Al-Adha. The people get them for Qurban and so on with their children. Wealthy people, I have seen wealthy people, they go and spend the whole day in Anayatim and Tahfir. They cook the food and sit with them and eat in the same plate. Allah, this is something great. It is something great, Alhamdulillah. Why to talk? Uh, yeah, the reason why there is something pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the, 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 these children, they are innocent. Their hearts still uh, pure. So when they prayed, there's one little girl, she went for a, in a, in a, in a, a picnic with a, in a school. And when she saw the ice cream shop, she makes a joke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The little girl. So the teacher said, why? She said, my mother told me, whenever I got what I want, what I know, I have to make sujood to Allah. Subhanallah. The children understand this. And when she do the sujood, they're very sincere. They know. When you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they know. They're very sincere. Sometimes the parents spoil the matter. And then early when they buy a small thing to the children, oh, thank you. Later in the future, they buy for him car. Why this car? <coughs> I don't want this guy, I don't want that one. I don't want So the children are very, it's what they are. Advice is ignoring at all. People suffer. Then, the uh, Alim asked the people to go and pray Salatu Istisqa outside the city, in the open field, all of them, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make Salat and ask Allah. So when they were all of them going out yeah, for Salat, they went onto the field. He saw one boy was carrying a pipe with an umbrella. Yeah. So the Sheikh said, the Sheikh he allowed other people to go. He said, hey, why are you carrying an umbrella? The boy said, I'm oh, going to ask Allah. And it's going to rain heavily, so I take the hands one. Huh? The Sheikh said, all of you go back. <laughs> Only this boy coming to pray. <laughs> but you have yaqeen. Allah, this is, 
if we still have this innocent of children, I'm not sure the children now innocent also sometimes. <laughs> not because of them. Wallah, we are the one who. The fitra is here. So Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Khajan, he was in a good environment also. When he left, you know the story, when he left, the, the mother told him something. He was leaving to Baghdad. So I want to continue my study. She said, okay, my son, I know that we are not going to meet again in this life. But hope to meet, inshallah, in Jannah. Therefore, please promise me now what to do. Promise me that you won't lie in your life. Say the truth on it. Say, I promise you. But I will say the truth. Ah, oh, she left. Of course, what she did, she got some coins and she stitched it here under his armpit, you know, a small pocket. Put the things inside and stitch it. He won't lose it. Thieves came, truly. Yeah. And they attacked the caravan. And they took everything. When they come to him, they saw he just carried a small bag, you know. Do you have anything? He said, yes. I have golden coins. <laughs> they didn't care for him. But the thief said to the <coughs> boss, the boss, you know, this one, one of them, he left me. Talk with us, I don't know what he said. Why? He had asked him to tell him, I have golden coins. Where is he? I went to see him. What do you have with you? He said, I have golden coins. Where are they? They check him. See here. He opened the thing, thing take the coins and put it on the man. Why are you telling me? Because you ask me. I can't lie. <laughs> See, who will know? Why you why, why you want to, to say the truth? Say, I promised my mother. He said, Your mother is not here. Say, but Allah is here. Allah listen. It's not my, because my mother wants to, because sometimes when we do something, we have from our parents. Oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Allah is looking. The boss was shocked. Because his sincerity. And he said to them, look, I, I was your boss in, in, in evil, and I will be your boss today in Tawbah Nasr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what who decide that your closeness to Allah? Because you do something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try, wallahi, try, try. You do something privately. No one knows. Help someone without anybody knows. And wait for the result. It won't take time. It won't take time. Allah for salah 24 hours and that that's good. But time to search. Special do special salat to special people, special tahajjud. In the madrasa, in Baghdad, the school of Sayyidina Shah Abu you know what you do? At night, the small little children, the, the students, he will come to their cloth himself at night and he wash by himself. And he cook the food for them and he feed them by his hand. This is what for peace and peace that. This is also a special tahajjud. Or should good deeds. Yeah, I have some Salam you say if you see an orphan and just put your hand on his head, in each hand you will get one reward. Just put it like that. How about pleasing him? Huh? In many ways we can do. The challenging part nowadays, nowadays what we need, the family and anyway. The fastest way to please Allah if you please the family. If you work hard. So, brother and sisters, um, this is your life. And the life has a book. And this book, you have to fill it with what please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to see in your book what pleases you in the day of judgment when it's open. Have Allah have to see in this book all the things which you took with you to that world, not the things you have left behind. 
May he grant us all closeness to him through our good deeds. May he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the purity of our good deeds, may he purify our hearts. May he help us to be an extraordinary people. Those who may do everything for the sake of him, and those whom they will receive only from him the highest reward in dunya and And we ask Allah, if any good deed we do, Ya Allah, I'm not doing that to get something for you, but I do that to please you, to be close to you. Ya Allah, allow me to feel the sweetness of closeness to you. And let this sweetness increase day by day. So I can feel the barakah and the meaning of being those who you awliya Allah. I don't want to be in a position of Wadiya because I search for it more. We want to be like that because you will give us that reward. Let us allow us, Ya Allah, to change our attitudes towards our families. Our sister, or human beings. Let us, Allah, understand that the mankind in two types. Our brothers in belief or our equal in humanity. So Allah allow us to please both, with both, pleasing both, will make you happy. And making you happy and pleased with us will make us happy in Akhirah and to get the highest and closest. Raja, you close as position to you to make you after. Ya Allah, is for us all the matters of our life. Bless us to be thankful to you always. Bless us to be always patient. Grant us, Ya Allah, successfulness in this world and in the year. Bless brothers and sisters, especially the students, for the best of study, the best of results. And may Allah allow them to do something good for humanity. And through this goodness, they will be close to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbana, 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 Rab